Are you a real estate investor and you self-manage your own property or you're using an out-of-state property manager and you thought about creating your own property management entity? Well, then you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to break down for you the differences in using LLCs versus corporations and the tax status that you want to consider when you set up your personal property management entity. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here's what it comes down to. If you have rental real estate, and it doesn't matter if it's in your particular state where you reside and you self-manage those properties, or maybe you invest outside the state in which you reside in, you're using a property manager to handle all of your property management activities. The question that will come up at some point in time is, hey, should I create my own property management entity? Because most of you that are watching my channel have set up entities to protect your rental real estate. You're using limited liability companies and land trusts and the things that I discuss on this channel. But one of the things that we don't touch on very often is, you know, do you need to set up a, another layer there from the management side? Because we're really spend a lot of time discussing the ownership side of your rental real estate and asset protection, the benefits that come from using these entities, but not so much on the benefits of having a property management company. So this is what we want to look at. When it comes to determining whether or not you should set up a property management entity, we're going to look at the assets themselves and where they're located. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this down for you in two different uh, scenarios. The first scenario we're going to talk about is when you self-manage your own real estate. And then I'm going to go into the scenario where you have out-of-state properties and you're using a professional property manager to handle those properties for you to determine whether or not having a separate entity set up to deal with the PM makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about the one where you self-manage. So in a self-management scenario, you have your assets, your real estate assets held in separate LLCs. And of course, you know that I like to use this Wyoming LLC to be the owner or blocker entity, however you want to describe it, of my red boxes. And so then I'm down here like this. So if I was the owner of these properties or owner of, the, owner of this structure and I'm self-managing, then oftentimes I'm going to have the LLCs themselves collecting the rent from the tenant. So all the money would be paid to those red boxes. You would never pay any money down here from the tenants to your Wyoming LLC. That would be a mistake if you attempted to do that. So in this scenario right here, assume that this individual, let's say they live in Colorado and these properties are all, these are all Colorado LLCs. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a separate bank account set up for each of those Colorado LLCs and the funds will be collected in that LLC name. Now, why would this person consider setting up a property management entity in this context? Well, one reason why you would set up a property management entity is if you wanted to simplify things. If you didn't want to have separate bank accounts for each of these LLCs and you wanted to have one entity dealing with all your tenants and collecting all the funds, then that would make sense to set up your own property management LLC. Now, when we're doing that, setting up this property management LLC, the question is going to come up is whether or not it should, be, how it should be treated for federal tax purposes. And before I go into that issue right there, I want to give you some other reasons why you may want to consider using a property management entity to when you're self-managing. So number one that I, I already mentioned was the fact that you're collecting all the funds at the property management level. So it simplifies the bank account issue. The second reason why you would want to consider this entity rather than doing it in your own name is that if you want anonymity, right? So you set up the structure with anonymity by using these red boxes all honed by the Wyoming Limited Liability Company. So if a tenant of this first LLC right here were to look up the LLC and wonder who owns it, it's going to point them down to the Wyoming LLC. And of course, that doesn't disclose your information. But the problem is, is that if you're out there every day or every week talking to your tenants, stopping by, how are things going? They're going to get the sense that you own the properties. So the anonymity benefit of the Wyoming LLC is substantially diminished vis-a-vis -vis your tenants because you're out there dealing with them in your individual capacity. So if you want to continue with this idea that I don't want my tenants to associate me as the owner of the property, even though it's in an LLC, then using a property management and, uh, LLC or some type of entity, I think makes a lot of sense there because now when you're dealing with your tenants, if you're doing it through the LLC, 
you're doing it as an officer of the LLC. So, so the tenants see the LLC itself as the property manager, and you are just an employee in their minds of that limited liability company. And it's not you as the individual owner that's holding themselves out with the authority to manage the property. So those are two compelling reasons why you, you may wanna set this up. A third reason could be asset protection. So when you're dealing with tenants, you know there's so many different laws out there now when it comes to uh, leasing property. And, and many times you may not even be aware of the law changes that take place. For example, discrimination, right? What, what constitutes discrimination? I was surprised to learn that if I put out an ad that stated that this house that I'm renting out is family friendly, well, I'm discriminated against people that do not have families and that is actionable. All right, well, maybe 15 years ago it wouldn't have been, but now our laws are so crazy, you just can't keep up with the people that are actually put these laws into, into effect. So I wanna make sure that I have a blocker there. So if somebody did come back against me and say, oh, you posted an ad that offended me and so I'm gonna sue you because I'm a miserable person and I feel even more miserable based upon reading your ad. And so that's actionable, right? So then they sue, they're gonna sue the limited liability company and we're gonna to try to insulate you personally from that lawsuit. So that's a third important reason why you may wanna consider using this type of structure. So that's from a business standpoint. Now let's focus on the tax aspects of this structure as well. So when you set up the LLC, you have a choice. You can set it up as either a C Corp for federal tax purposes. So it could be a C Corp, it could be an S Corp, or it could be disregarded, which means that it doesn't have to file a tax return. So this is really important here when you're, when you're structuring this entity, making sure you make the right tax election for this entity because it could mean added expenses on an annual basis to maintain that property management structure that you've just put in place. So what are we thinking here? Now, if you set it up to be treated as a C Corp or an S Corp, you're gonna to have to file a tax return for those two structures. So with a C Corp, it's gonna be an 1120. With an S Corp, it's going to be an 1120S. Now, a disregarded entity, there is no tax return that is required to be filed. So when I'm working with someone that has a rental portfolio, maybe it's a smaller portfolio and they're just starting out, we'll go through the aspects, the business aspects of why they should set up a property management entity. And then when it comes down to the tax election, what I will analyze then is how much income, net income do we have coming off these properties? And how much could we then move into the corporation? What, am I, what do I mean by move into the corporation or the LLC that is? See, what I'm looking for there is whether or not it makes financial sense to have this entity treated as a CRS to collect money at that entity and keep it as profit for the entity because I'm gonna take that profit and then pay it out to myself and write it off. Now, if I have a pro my properties, let's say this property right here generates $2,000 a month in rental income, but when you add up my mortgage and all my other expenses, it turns out that I'm paying $17.50 out the door. Well, that only leaves $250 on a monthly basis from, from the, where there could be income that I could use to pay a management fee. So in that scenario, there's not a lot of leftover income there. And so when you're thinking about, all right, do I wanna set up a, a cor uh, entity that's gonna be a CRS that's gonna have to file a tax return and start looking at some of the tax plays that could be done here? I may determine that 250, you know, that's $2,400 a year. Maybe that's not enough for me. And so I, I won't do that. So the, and if that's the case, if you realize that, that there's no benefit there for you from a tax standpoint, because you have plenty of depreciation that wipes out that income anyways, then what I would do is I set up that property management entity. I would elect to treat it as a disregarded entity for tax purposes. So what that means is that when I set it up as a disregarded entity, it doesn't have to file a federal tax return. And I have my LLCs right here, right? With the properties like I just drew before. And so every month my tenants are paying this entity. So let's say I bring in $2,000 into this entity right here. And then this entity then pays all the expenses associated with this property. It has $250 left over. And what it's gonna do then is take that 250 and move it down here into the Wyoming LLC. Because the reason why you have to do that 
is that the red boxes are owned by the blue box. You would not take that 250 and say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to pay it directly to myself and put it in your personal bank account. You can't do that because now you're ignoring the form of the structure you created to protect your assets. So you have to move it from the management entity down here into the blue box. So that's that's important right there. Now, by doing that and taking all that income and putting it down here into the blue box, that leaves zero money left in the orange box. So the orange box is not making any money. Or if you wanted to leave $5 there, whatever you want to do, it's not making any money. So at the end of the day, there's nothing from a tax standpoint that's going to, to move the needle for you. It's all ignored. It's disregarded. Your tax return looks the same. The only reason why we're using this entity is for what I talked about earlier, for a buffer, for, for business purposes. So if there's, if there's not a tax motivation here, then set it up as a disregarded entity. Now, on the other hand, if you do have a tax motivation, okay, so, so you're realizing, hey, I want to I want to set up a structure where I can create losses for myself from my real estate or reduce the amount of income that flows down to me so I pay less in personal income tax on that rental income, then it would make sense to set up that property management entity and treat it as a C or S corp. Now, my preference, 100% of the time, when you set up this property management LLC, if it's a tax play, is to set this up as a sequel. I do not like S-Corps for this because S-Corps are flow through. I prefer to use a C-Corp, which is not a flow through entity. So any income that remains in the C-Corp is taxed at a flat 21% and is not flowing down onto my tax bracket. That's one reason. The second reason, which I think is even more important than the first reason, is that if you set this up as an S corporation, yes, it's a flow through entity to you, but what that means is that every year when you file a tax return, it's gonna kick off a K-1 to you to show you the amount of income that entity generated. Now, the problem with that K-1 that you receive from an S corporation, and there's a lot of guys out there on the internet and CPAs slash attorneys that they love S corporations, right? But in a real estate context, I don't think S corporations are that beneficial because when you get that K-1, that's gonna show up on your 1040. Okay, now many of these people that I'm that I'm familiar with, and you probably are too, that talk about S corporations, I wonder if they buy real estate and they finance. Because you know that when you apply for a loan, the underwriter would like to see a copy of your individual 1040. So when you turn over your individual 1040, to an underwriter to apply for a loan, if you have a K-1 from an S corporation attached to that 1040, which you would if you were an owner of an S corp, the underwriter will see that and then they will ask for information on your business. So now you have to provide them balance sheet, profit and loss, and all the S corporation's tax returns for the last two or three years, depending on the underwriter. And so that makes your loan or your borrowing process more complex. And now you have an underwriter who will be questioning you about this business activity up here. And why do I not want an underwriter looking into my business? Because they may not understand that the, the primary motivation for that S corporation is not to create a profit, it's to write off expenses to, so that it actually shows no profit. But when it comes to borrowing money, Lenders want to see that you have businesses that are profitable and they're performing, but from a tax side, we don't like that. So see, there's always that, that, that um, loggerhead there of you know, being able to borrow and, and showing money and being able to reduce our, our income for tax purposes so we pay less in tax. So the S corporation doesn't lend itself very, uh, or it's not very effective in helping you move the ball forwards. And so that's why I prefer the C corp. So I'm not even going to talk about this because it's just, it, it's just that I mean, I'll be straight up. It's stupid. I would never use an S corporation in this, con, in this context. So now I've got the C corporation there. So here's the tax play that I'm referring to. Let's assume that uh, two scenarios here. This property generates $2,000 in monthly rental income. And the expenses and the mortgage on the property is $1,000 a month. So you have $1,000 left over. 
All right, now we have a lot of a lot of cash left over. We're making twelve thousand dollars a year before taxes and uh, depreciation and insurance that we're going to be deducting and whatever else, other expenses you have against this income. So if you want to reduce your income, then this is a perfect time for you to say, all right, this LLC charges a management fee for managing this rental property. And that management fee is, well, maybe most people are, are uh, PMs charge 10%, but you do more, don't you? You're more involved in your property than a typical property manager. So I'm going to charge 20% plus one full month whenever there is a turn on the property. So assuming we don't have any turns on the property, that's $400 a month that this corporation will take out of the proceeds it's collecting on. Because remember, it's collecting the proceeds. So if the tenant pays the corporation $2,000, my corporation will take $1,000 and pay you know, the mortgage and all the other expenses associated with the property. Then out of that remaining $1,000, it's going to take $400 and keep that in its bank account. And then it'll have remaining $600 left that it'll distribute to the owner, which is the blue box, all right? So that $400 now remains here in the C corporation, and that does not flow down to me into my personal tax bracket. It stays in the corporation, it'll be taxed at a flat 21%, unless we talk about how you can expense that out. Maybe we'll get to that. Okay, so that's an example where you've got some really nice profit on a monthly basis on a particular property. But remember that first property that I talked about where it was making $2,000 a month and um, we had $1,750 in expenses, so we only had $250 left over every month? And I mentioned possibly that doesn't make sense to use a property management entity here because it's too thin. Well, just like everything that we talk about here on this channel and what we do at Anderson, it's not a one-size-fits-all approach to planning. So here's something to consider. Now, if this investor down here qualified as a real estate professional or they're involved in short-term rentals and they, of course, meet the material participation of 100 hours uh, a year, then in that case, you may want to use this type of structure and actually have an LLC treat as a, a C corporation and expense up those funds. And what am I getting at here? So let's assume I adopt the same principle where it's 20% management fee. So now I have to pay $400 management fee. That means I need to come up with the extra 150 every month out of pocket to cover the shortfall to get that 400 up here. But what is it doing for me individually from a tax standpoint? Well, if you look at this from a tax standpoint, your property brought in $2,000. That's how much the corporation collected from the tenant. Uh, it paid out $1,750. Okay, let's say, you know, of course, not all of that is going to be deductible because a portion of that is principal payment. So let's, let's just say $1,500 of that is deductible for taxes, insurance, and interest. So, so $1,500. So that leaves us with $500 of taxable income. Now I take $400 management fee. Now I only have $100 of taxable income on a monthly basis, or that equals to $1,200 a year in, in taxable income. Now, if I take my depreciation at the end of the year, because you take residential real estate and you take the, the value of the structures, not the land, and you divide it by 27 and a half years, maybe the depreciation on this particular property um, amounts to $18,000 a year. So when I take my income, less the depreciation, I will show now a $16,800,000 loss that if I'm a real estate professional or I'm engaged in short-term rental business, I can use that to offset my income, my spouse's income, my W-2 income. So this is where it could make sense for you. If you're a real estate professional, even if you've got a property that only throws off a thin amount of income, what you're doing by sucking all that income off there and maybe a little more is you're creating losses for yourself to offset your active income that you're generating from other sources or your spouse is generating from another source. So again, this is another play for you that if all you've been focused on right now is 
asset protection, maybe it's time for you to set up a strategy session with us. Go into the show notes. We have a link there. You can get a free strategy session and we can explore whether or not using a management entity, an LLC treated as a C corp makes sense. Now you're thinking, all right, well, Clint, I give this money up in my corporation. What am I going to do with it? You're going to spend it, but you're going to spend it in such a way that allows you to take a deduction up here and it's non-taxable down here. That's how we spend our money with our C corporations. We want to make sure that everything we're writing off to the C corporation is not turning around and hitting us as income. That's why you wouldn't pay yourself a salary out of this company. Do not pay yourself a salary. Take it out as fringe benefits. Take the money out as reimbursements. Take the money out as uh, as 280A, renting your property, your personal residence out to your corporation or an accountable plan. There's so many different ways in which we can gain access to these funds. And until that business starts generating twenty dollars or $30,000 in profit, you're probably going to be able to expense everything out. And all that is doing is putting more money back in your pocket on an annual basis. All right, so this was the self-management side. I did say I would talk about the professional management side. So if you've been waiting for that, here we go. So now if I have a structure set up, like we were just doing there, where again, say I've got three properties out of state and they're held by my Wyoming LLC right here. Okay, drop down there, down there. Now, since these are all handled by a PM, let's say they're all in the same state. So this is, uh, I live in Washington. My rental's here in Missouri, okay? And I have one PM over here in Missouri. This guy or his company handles everything for these tenants, all right? All the money gets paid here. So on a monthly basis, this person, well, they're Missouri properties, maybe they're collecting uh, $3,500 a month in rental income. Now, if you watch my other videos about bank accounts and LLCs or what I've even touched on in this video, I talk about the property management entity or the property manager, professional property manager will typically issue your owner statement and your wire to your holding company, not to the individual red boxes. Well, that's one way to do it. Another way to do this, if you're looking solely for a tax play, and that's only time you would do this, right? If you're using an out-of-state property manager, you don't need that business side that I was talking about where you need the anonymity in dealing with your tenants. Uh, you're concerned about someone suing you. That doesn't apply to you because you're not dealing with these tenants any longer. So the only reason you would wanna consider putting one of these types of structures into your plan is that you wanna set up the LLC and you want it to be treated as a C Corp because you wanna reduce the income that's flowing down to you from your investment property. So now what we're going to do is rather than having the PM pay this company, we're going to have our PM pay our management entity. So our PM collects $3,500 from the tenants and the PM keeps $350 for their fee. So then they remit back to us $3,150. Now, my LLC will have a management agreement. My property management LLC will have a management agreement with each red box. So when we're working with our clients, we set these up for them. So we set up a, a management agreement, which states that this company is going to manage the property manager and still be looking over the LLC and the properties itself. So it's going to be doing additional activities there. And it wants to get paid for that. So on top of what this company's charging, I'm going to charge a surcharge of an additional 15%. So then I would take in all right, if $3,500 was generated, take 15% of that, and then you'll move that into the corporation. So let's say that's $500. So now we're gonna collect an additional five, we're gonna collect, not additional, we're gonna collect $500 at our own property management level. And then if you look at the numbers here, 3150 went to the entity after this party took its piece. Then we take our piece of $500, and that leaves us with $26.50, okay, left over. So that $26.50 is what your orange box will now remit to your blue box because there's no more line here. What we have now is our property management, out-of-state property manager over here. He pays money here. You take your piece here. And then what you'll do is you remit the rest down here to your blue box. That's how you would run that. And again, why are we collecting $500 of that property management entities? Because over the course of a year, that's going to be $6,000.
That's $6,000 that doesn't flow down to you. That's $6,000 that you've now taken off your tax return. So you're increasing your losses that you can then utilize, especially if you're a real estate professional or, or short term rentals to reduce your taxable income. Maybe you're not a real estate professional or you're into short term rentals. If these properties are all cash flow positive and even after depreciation, they're showing taxable income, well, here's a way in which for you to minimize that taxable income by using a property management entity. You know what, guys? This is why I like using LLCs and corporations in the tax code when it comes to working with real estate investors because it gives us opportunities. You just need to know where to look to find these types of opportunities. More importantly, you need to find the right type of company who does this and understands it to help help you generate more after-tax income. Because at the end of the day, it's not how much you collect, it's how much you keep from your properties. And here at Anderson, that is our stated goal for our clients. And if you'd like to get a strategy session, as I mentioned earlier, hey, in the show notes below, there is a link that you can click on. It's a free 45 minute strategy session. You'll sit down with one of our representatives here at Anderson and we'll analyze your structure. And we'll tell you whether or not, hey, does it make sense for me? Okay, why not get a, an opinion on that? Maybe a second opinion to see if you need a property management entity in your real estate investing structure. Guys, if you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button and you know what it comes to subscribing, punch that button and get subscribed. Take care.